you may come across questions on the reading test where you have trouble understanding what's being discussed. Maybe this is because of some difficult word or term you're unfamiliar with. In this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with these questions by using the surrounding context of the situation to help us out. What if you saw this word on its own? Egalitarian. Unless you happen to be familiar with the word already, there's no way you could really figure out what it means. But what if you saw this word with some context, that is, with some surrounding information? The egalitarian government believed that all its citizens should have equal rights, regardless of their social or economic situation. Ah, so now that I see how this word is used within a larger context, I can use the surrounding words to try and figure out what it means. From its use in this sentence, it seems to have something to do with equal rights for everyone. The ability to determine meaning from the surrounding context is something that we all use every day. Think of the last few words that you learned in everyday life. You probably didn't learn them by randomly flipping through a dictionary. Instead, you may have heard or seen them used by friends or in the media. And by seeing these terms used enough times, you probably managed to figure out their meanings by using the surrounding contexts. Of course, this way of determining meanings can work not only for single words, but also for terms and phrases. Take this phrase, for instance, from reading part 4. Geothermal superconductors are sunk about 35 feet underground. Um, what's a geothermal superconductor and why is it underground? What does any of this mean? As you can see, if this phrase is taken on its own, it's pretty tough to figure out what's going on. But now, here's a bit more context. What better solution is there for a wintry city? asks Montreal engineer Annie Drapeau. She explains that geothermal superconductors are sunk about 35 feet underground, where the Earth's temperature is around 12 degrees Celsius, thus supplying a constant source of heat that keeps sidewalks ice-free. Okay, that's a bit better. I still may not know exactly what a geothermal superconductor is, but now I can tell that it's some sort of machine that helps heat sidewalks, especially in winter. And that's often good enough. You won't be expected to define specific terms like this on the test. If you can use the surrounding context to determine the general meaning of the words and concepts that you don't know, that may be sufficient. I also want to point out that reading parts 3 and 4 are the most difficult parts of the reading test. Therefore, situations dealing with context will likely occur more often in these parts. But be prepared to use this skill on any part. You never know when you'll come across an unfamiliar term. Now let's read an excerpt from part 4. Then we'll look at one of the questions. This passage discusses the problems in dealing with an insect called the deer tick which causes Lyme disease. And just remember, on the real test, you won't hear any of the readings. You'll just see them. Okay. Dr. Meckley had no easy answers for Chibucto daycare proprietor Huda Azarvand when she asked what was being done to discourage deer ticks. Azarvand insisted that children needed to play outdoors, adding that it wasn't feasible to confine them to the house to protect them from ticks. Clara Ocampo, a mother of four, agreed. Fumigate the parks, like in the States. Let us spray our yards with insecticides. Get rid of the ticks and make the outdoors safe for our dogs and our kids. Okay, so there may have been some terms here that you were unfamiliar with. Maybe proprietor, or feasible, or fumigate, or insecticide. That's okay. I want to point out that you will not need to stop and figure out every single word that you don't understand on the reading test. Some of these terms may not be relevant to any questions, and it would just waste time. What's important is that you only focus on words or terms that you don't know if they contribute to the overall meaning of the passage. For example, if you come across a word you don't understand, but it only appears once in a passage, then perhaps it's not worth focusing on. But if a word recurs again and again, then chances are it's important. 
Even better, the more often a word appears, the more chances you'll have at figuring out what it means. Let's look at a question now. Which reason is given for fumigating with insecticides? It has been well researched by US scientists. It has a history of safe use in the Eastern US. It is preferable to aggressive antibiotic use. It could make outdoor play safer for kids. Okay, so it looks like we'd better figure out what fumigating and insecticides mean, since they're important enough to be in a question. We'll need to use the surrounding context here to figure things out. Let's go back to the paragraph. Both words are used near the end. Fumigate the parks. Hmm. What about the next sentence? Let us spray our yards with insecticides. Could fumigate have a similar meaning to spray? And what are insecticides anyway? The topic here is how to get rid of deer ticks. Maybe insecticides are chemicals that are sprayed to kill ticks? So to put things together, fumigating with insecticides likely means using chemicals to get rid of deer ticks. And as the last sentence in this paragraph states, getting rid of these ticks may make the outdoors safe for kids again. Therefore, the reason for fumigating with insecticides must be D. It could make outdoor play safer for kids. One last thing. The ability to figure out the meaning of a piece of text by using the surrounding words and phrases is closely related to the concept of inference. As I mentioned in a previous video, when you make an inference, you draw conclusions based on what you read, using information you learned from the passage. For these questions, the answer will not be mentioned directly in the passage. You've got to be able to make reasonable and logical assumptions about the situation. So in both cases, you're using your ability to recognize connections between words and ideas in order to reach conclusions that may not be specifically stated. In the next and final video in Reading Strategies, We'll talk about how to deal with questions where you can't decide between a few of the answers.